how do you raise your HDL cholesterol? Do you even need to raise your HDL cholesterol? For the longest time, we used to think that HDL cholesterol is protective and that it's helpful, but we actually don't anymore. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Al, I'm a board certified cardiologist, and I'm actually writing a book on cholesterol that is almost out and ready for publication. So when you look at the old Framingham data, there was this thought based on the data, it was like this huge cohort, you know, this whole huge group of people that we followed for many years. It was found that the people with the highest HDLs did better and the people with the lower HDLs did not. So there was this theory among the cardiology world that perhaps we needed higher HDLs to protect us against atherosclerosis. Well, as time would go on, research study after research study after research study found out that the HDL cholesterol, the HDL inside each lipoprotein, really did not uh, matter. The LDL cholesterol inside of the HDL particles really did not matter. There are two major types of lipoproteins. There's the LDLs, which have traditionally been called bad, or they're low-density lipoproteins, and there's the HDLs, which have traditionally been called good, or you know, high-density lipoproteins. High-density lipoproteins generally collect cholesterol from your arteries and bring it back to the liver to be eliminated. LDLs may also do that. The HDLs sometimes hook up with the LDLs and give them the cholesterol to also bring it back. So calling an LDL always bad is not correct form because the LDLs do serve a good purpose sometimes when they take the cholesterol from the HDLs and return it back to the liver for elimination. So that nomenclature is kind of out the window. We don't like to call HDLs good and LDLs bad, but even more than that, when the studies were finally done and you corrected for LDL cholesterol, like for example, regardless of what HDL level you have, it is the LDL at every level that determines your risk. And more specifically, it was the ApoB or the apolipoprotein B. A lot of people ask, well, what is apolipoprotein B? Well, it is the blue structural molecule. If you look over here, it's the blue structural molecule that holds the low density lipoprotein together. The cholesterol is just the yellow stuff, you know, inside. That is not the issue. The issue is this low density lipoprotein that is carrying the cholesterol around. So this whole thing is low density lipoprotein, this blue molecule, the structural kind of molecule that holds it together is called the apolipoprotein B. That's what holds this together. That's what we measure. So they found that HDL at any level of LDL, or I'm sorry, LDL at any level of HDL was what predicted risks and more specifically the apolipoprotein B carrying molecules, which are your VDLs, IDLs, like the very low density lipoproteins, intermediate density lipoproteins, uh, low density lipoproteins, and also chylomicrons. The most of those don't exist very long in plasma. The one that exists the longest in plasma, which is a three to seven day, maybe half-life for plasma residents, um, is the low density lipoprotein. 90 to 95% of the atherogenic molecules or the ApoB containing molecules in your bloodstream are these LDL particles. These are what impart risk because this goes into your arteries, it gets oxidized, gets destroyed inside your arterial wall, um, combines and aggregates with other uh, low density lipoproteins, and then the macrophages come and attack it, cholesterol gets released, it ends up in these big macrophages. Macrophage just means big eater, it's this thing that comes and tries to eat these things away. It's kind of like an immune response to it to try to destroy these things before they destroy you. And they collect in your arteries, cholesterol packs in there, eventually crystallizes, and it's very toxic to the arterial wall. Over time, the arterial wall gets narrower and narrower and narrower. Sometimes they rupture and you have an acute heart attack. But as it gets narrower and narrower and narrower, you start getting that like squeezing kind of chest pain when you exert yourself or do things. And unfortunately, that's where bad outcomes happen. So hopefully this explains it and clears it up. If you want more, go to drallo.net slash cholesterol to sign up to know when my cholesterol book is coming out and get some preview pages and some really nice, uh, my really nice lipid and longevity guide. Um, I think you're going to enjoy it. Go to drallo.net slash cholesterol. See you in the next episode.